Hi, I'm Stacey, and welcome back to the Backyard server. I am currently riding on the first completed rail line. I- oh, my camera's- whoa, what the heck? Oh, god. I've broken things. Help. Oh, oh god, it's pretty- ah! There we go. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm currently riding the first completed rail line. I did most of this on stream, but I've done some terraforming today, and I think it's looking quite nice. It's missing a bunch of trees and stuff, like I'll obviously need to do some of those. But it doesn't look like much is different, but underneath you can see that actually, yeah, it, it is considerably different. There's still some bits I haven't done just yet, but there's a reason for that I'll get to in, into in a second. But here we are going up to the station. Yes, this also goes from my station over here, or mine and BH's station all the way over to the spawn station, and I'll maybe do a little uh, showcase of that in a bit later in the episode. So now I need to start thinking about how I want to connect this up to other lines. So let's first head over this way. Feels like I can use the minecart, I don't know why I'm not using it. No, not that way! So over this way towards uh, Cherry's beautiful base, we've got this! This is the bridge that heads over to where Sprinkles and Cherry are going to have their station. It's a little bit far away from their base, but I think it's going to act as sort of like a hub station. It's going to be... It's less for just them and more for like the area, I guess. I'm going to have to get a T-junction in here, and oh, she's not lit up underneath. <laughs> and it's going to be kind of interesting to try and get one down here, since it is a bit more compact than I normally would have to work with, but that's going to be a fun challenge, as we do have a design that should fit here. But before I can really do anything uh, redstone-y, I'm going to have to actually get some. I'm, I'm kind of running low on any materials right now. And gold, I am basically out of. This is all the gold I own. It is, yeah, it's not great. So probably have to get a gold farm soon. But I think what I want to do is I want to go mining, get myself a bunch of redstone, and then we can start doing a bit of... You know, get, get into doing some of the, uh, the logistics, getting this train line into a full train network. Uh, I've had a really weird glitch. For some reason, my pickaxes have stopped working. Why, why is this so slow? I I, I don't get it. Like it's it's so slow. it's a, it's an efficiency five pickaxe, and it's just it doesn't my my pick stopped working. What? How do I get out of here? Like my shovel still works fine. My pickaxe doesn't. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Like, I'm really far down in the cave. I can't mine anything. Like, I'm literally at lava layer. I just need to find a way out on foot, I guess. Or break out by hand. This is the worst place possible I could have been. I haven't gone caving in months. And I, did, I, 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 I go once and pickaxes stop working. What? I found a way out <laughs> of the water bit here. I managed to dig my way out. Oh, God. Okay, let's go back to my base. Okay, well, ignoring that uh, my pickaxe stopped working, I got a decent haul, got loads of redstone. This should cover me for a bit. This is probably about two or three junctions worth of redstone. Uh, and then I've also got eight blocks of gold, which isn't amazing, but it's definitely enough for now. And while it's doing that, I'm going to get myself some redstone prepared. The issue is that it's going to be very strange to try and build redstone while being unable to break any blocks. I guess I'm just not allowed to make any mistakes. I have been informed that there's actually a bunch of redstone over in the donation box as well, so mining might not have been uh, necessary at all. What is that zoom? <laughs> there we go, look at that. Nine stacks, as uh, we box back here. I, I like that they separated the stacks out so they could get uh, a diamond from the box. <laughs> you only get a diamond if you have a full row of items. I guess I didn't really account for that. And also there's loads of cherry logs in there. I think I'm going to leave those just for aesthetic purposes, but I'm going to take these to make some redstone. Even shulker boxes are slow to break. This is going to be miserable. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to move uh, Sprinkle's uh, stuff out of the way, but I'm going to quickly nick her bed. Oh, it's gonna take a while. I'll be right back with you once I've managed to somehow relocate all of this. I somehow gained an item, so I think one of these items in here is actually mine. Um, I don't actually know which one now. Oh, the food, that's mine. Okay, there we go. The stone cuts are even slower. Uh -huh. You know what? You can stay. Uh, I can work around you. Actually, can I? 
Nope, I can't. You need to go. I stole a crafting table too. Absolute criminal. But okay, so that's all, folks. Okay, so now it is time to do some redstone. It's gonna be interesting without a pickaxe, but I am exceptionally excited to show you what I've designed here because I'm gonna be doing the junction next to Sprinkles Bridge. And Sprinkles Bridge has come up with a few sort of design limitations I'm having to uh, work around. Firstly, the uh, track is actually slightly raised up, which means I can't really have redstone poking out the side like I normally do. And also, the bridge is a bit skinnier than I normally would work with, which means I'm going to have to sort of slightly compact the sides in. And in doing so, while I was playing around in creative mode, I think I've managed to come up with a design which is amazing and way better than any other like junction I've ever made. I'm like so excited to show you. I'm really hoping it works. I've only done some testing in creative mode. I haven't really done any stress testing yet, so this is going to be our sort of uh, like a research. And if it works really well, then uh, we can get a tutorial going if people people are interested. So yeah, go to the comments and ask for that. Go scream at me. Say mean words. Don't say mean words, I'm, I'm weak. So I've kind of been dragging my feet when it comes to releasing any like T-junction designs. And part of the reason for that is I've never really been that happy with the designs we've had. They all work and function, like we've been using them for years. I've actually had some T-junction designs for longer than we've had roundabout design. But the reason I've been putting them off is that I just, I, I don't feel confident enough to share them in a tutorial space. Because there's a lot of weird sort of edge cases, it doesn't work in every single format, it's it's just not a perfect design, you know? So, I have just I just haven't made a video on it. And, well, I think I might finally have that design, so I'm really hoping that this works out. So, it's going to be using the same sort of layout as my previous T-junctions that I've built on the other server. Where's my stuff? So, if you are familiar with the T-junctions I've made before, they have a bit of a weird layout, it's a bit wonky, and I'm going to show you why. So I need to get this sort of shape in, and then do that, 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 that. And then from here, I just need to make sure that this one is facing left, this one is facing right, this one is facing left. And then from here, I just need to then power this one, this one, and this one. So I need to go down below and place in some target blocks, but sleepy time. This is the layout I want to go with. It looks like an absolute jumbled mess. Okay, so let's start by doing... Uh, I need to do this side first, just to make sure it actually fits in here. I'm pretty sure it should. I've just had a realisation, I'm going to have to push this over by one block. Oh, this is going to be miserable. I just did all that as well. Oh no! Oh god! Oh, this is going to take forever! Well, that sucked, but hey, it is now all uh, in line. This gives me plenty more space to do some redstone either side. Probably wasn't necessary, but I've done it now, so that's time I'm not getting back. But now I just need to break out these two blocks. Oh, God. Uh, no pickaxe challenge. I don't even know why I'm bothering using the pickaxe. Like, it's not doing anything. I think it's just there for, like, emotional support. Okay, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build up one of these segments first, and then we can jump into giving a sort of demonstration of how it works, rather than me trying to go through piece by piece. And we can do. I'll leave the tutorial for the tutorial, you know. The baby, be I back. Okay, so the first junction is in, and look how. Ah! It's not my day. Okay, over here. Look, look at this. Look how amazing this is. It's so small. Okay, so it functions pretty much like a normal T-junction. Uh, without a ticket, it will go left. And then with a ticket, in this case a plain iron nugget, it will go right. And it should work the same with a full set of minecarts as like a whole train. And down below, it's pretty simple. It's basically just the same uh, set that we have elsewhere. Just kind of reorganized to fit in a much more compact uh, space and honestly, I feel like I could probably compact this more if I wanted to. But basically, uh, this purpley magenta terracotta is actually an item filter that's kind of been rejigged to fit underneath the andesite. So normally we'd have it like going out the side in that classic sort of diamond shape, but instead I've got the uh, the comparator going inwards, poking into this block here, 
which then has the redstone kind of wrap round into this repeater that then goes into the torch. So it's it's just a it's just a deconstructed item filter. But one difference we have is that this design will actually use uh, crafters in it. Crafters have a fun little thing in that they don't get bud powered like droppers do. So basically there's no weird like unintended powerings of stuff. Like it'll only power how you want it to, which is amazing. So basically this crafter here uh, will get powered whenever a ticket goes through and then craft this iron into nuggets which will then fill up this crafter over here and that will then have a signal taken out of it which then goes up into the uh, the track which will then switch it over to your desired direction and then this green thing here is the pulse extender basically just above is the detector rail like normal uh, when a minecart goes over it, it will activate the pulse extender. It will then unpower this torch here, and then when it repowers, it will then activate this crafter, sending the mic items back into here, and uh, reset the system. So that's like basically it. Uh, it's it's so it's like it's so simple, but it's just trying to get it into the small form factor with the right pain. But I've got it working, and I'm so happy about it. But there is one aspect about this which is somewhat interesting. The bit that I'm especially happy about. Pretty much every junction will default left by default. Default, I'm using default too often. So without a ticket, you will always go left on like pretty much 90% of junctions. But there's plenty of times where you, you, you don't really want that. If like Sprinkles or Cherry, for example, wanted to go to the right more often, like say Sprinkles wanted to go visit BH and M and J's and all that really often, then you'd want to save a ticket here and have it go right. And normally that takes a bit of uh, effort to sort out. But what makes this design so amazing is that all you need to do to make it go from being this system to an inverted system is you just need to have a block here get rid of that redstone, replace it with a comparator, uh, turn that to subtract mode, and then just put a piece of redstone dust there. And it's, it's, now, it's now primed to do the opposite. It's like, that's so simple compared to all the other methods I've been using. Oh, it's amazing. I'll quickly show you it in action, just make sure it actually does work. Uh, I need to grab some minecarts. So now without a ticket, it should go to the right, like so. But then with a ticket, it will instead go left. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I love it. Sorry if I'm being like too overexcited about this, but it's it's so cool. I you don't understand how much time I spent thinking about this T junction. I've I I just haven't felt right about any of the designs at all. So I'm so glad to finally have one that is like re really good, but. Uh, let's quickly give you a demonstration of how the uh, default directions work. So basically when there is a minecart on this detector rail up here, it will power this pulse extender which will then power here, which then will power the comparator, which will then power the target block. But then, uh, when the ticket goes through the machine, it powers the crafter which then puts the nuggets over here. That then gets read up by the, uh, the comparator going into the repeater which then goes into this block here. Now since... oh god. So basically here, uh, this signal right here is a power of 14 and this one over here is a power of 15. And basically this comparator will subtract 15 from 14 which is minus 1. So basically this comparator will turn off and stop sending power up to the top which will basically just lock the system, preventing any, like, minecarts from turning. So now I just need to rotate the same design uh, to the left and the right. And here it is! Look, it, it's in, and it is now all functional. If I quickly just grab some chesty minecarts. Uh, I've not actually set up the filters yet, give me a sec. Okay, so this one over here is set to go forward without a ticket. Oh, oh god, I probably should have uh, cut the track off before I did that. No, come back. Let's just... Oh, oh, I can mine! The pickaxe is working! Look at the... Hey! Can I use... Yes, oh my god, thank god! <laughs> 
So without a ticket, it goes forward, and then with a ticket, it will go to the right, like so. Perfecto. And then it's going to be the same for over here. Without a ticket, it will go forward, while with a ticket, it will go to the left. Oh, I forgot to put the iron. I forgot to put the iron ingot into the crafter. There we go. Okay, do that again. That should go to the left. There we go. Play. <laughs> and it works the same if I wanted to make these do the inverted thing. I would just put a block here and then have a comparator there. And same for over here. My only issue with this design is that you can't invert this torch uh, without going outside of the footprint of the rail. Because if you wanted to do the inverting like this, where you've got one for the side, that that that. If you did it that way, you'd power that redstone. If you did it this way, you'd power that redstone, and then this side's the input. So you'd have to either go out that way, maybe go underneath, actually. Yeah, you could go underneath, actually. I just realized you could put a one, a target block here instead. Okay, I figured that. Never mind. Ignore me. So for when you want to enter the station, I've set the ticket to be share slash sprink. Since they're going to be sharing a station, so that it's not going to be like a situation with me and B8 where we have two separate platforms. I think it's just going to be one platform for these two over here. And then for when you want to leave, by default you'll go left, but then I'll just put in a right ticket to go the other way. Usually I'd recommend against using left and right tickets, as they can often be eaten up by other junctions using the same ticket. That like you you want to make sure none of your tickets are the same as anywhere else on the rail. But usually when it comes to left and right tickets, it's going to be the first one used up anyway, so it doesn't matter that much. It'll be gone by the time you get onto the main network. So yeah, that's, it's not a problem there. So back over here at my base, I want to do a route that will take me from here, take me left along the rail, along there, over to Cherry and Springs area, then back onto the main line again, and then head over to Spawn. And to do that, that route will require a spawn ticket and a cherry slash spring ticket. In there should be the cherry and sprinkle ticket. Perfect. Just need to get into here and then press the button and we should be on our way. Okay, so over here we're approaching the bridge. So the first ticket should be used. It should take us left. Perfect. And then it's going to put us straight back onto the track. Okay. And then now it will take us all the way to spawn. And here we are approaching the spawn station, so the ticket should hopefully just take us... Hey, look at that! Yeah! Oh, it is a beautiful day. And there should be no tickets left? Perfect. Okay. It works! It works so well! Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, let's just quickly chuck the minecart chest into here, and then the regular minecart into there. And we are now at spawn, we can just do whatever we want. So obviously, if you were to do an actual route, you wouldn't go down one of the T-junctions and go instantly back out of it. That was just more of a testing to see if uh, tickets and stuff worked in parallel, having multiple in, the, in a chest and stuff. And clearly it does, and you can just imagine how cool of a network you can make by having a bunch of those T-junctions around. And with the new design, it's way easier to implement them in a much smaller area. Now, over here... Uh, where we enter the bridge. This is an interesting one because originally this was going to be a roundabout, but I don't really know if that's necessary here because you got the entrance from this side, exit from that side, and then also I want to go to the north. We also want to have a route that goes over to the east, but if we were to have the roundabout directly here, it would take you like this way. And then, like, you'd have to just go straight across an ocean, which is obviously not ideal. 
so I don't I don't know if I want to do a roundabout here. The only other option I can think of is if you had the this rail go directly this way across the thing, pretty much in a straight line over there and carry on to the north, while this one would go over this way and then kind of go down the hill and then kind of loop over to where that like cobbled bridge over there is currently. I think that could look kind of nice, but I want to do some uh, experiments with the roundabout design using some of the new stuff I've learnt from doing the uh, the, 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 other, the other stuff, the, the, the T-junction. So I think I'll leave this for now, but aside from that I've got two other T-junctions planned. Ow. Okay, so I'm going to be needing a T-junction just over there, like pretty close to Sprinkles there bridge. So that'll be timers. And then I also want one. And I'm also wanting to have a T-junction in this cave over here, which will connect up my station over here to the north. As the north is currently blocked off by a big mountain. And if we were to go directly in a line from here, we'll come out here and then just all the way down here we we'll have this choo-choo sign so this is in the center of m over there j is over there bh is just up that hill you can't see him because of the tree line and then lumble is just over there so this is the nice sort of central location so what i am thinking is i kind of want to do like a roundabout here one will go that way to J's, one of them will go that way to M, and they'll go directly into their own personal stations. Initially I was going to combine their stations, but I think it'd probably be better if I had them uh, separate. But I need to discuss with them where they want them specifically. And then from here, God knows where I'm going to be going. I was really being like off-put by some of the like junction locations and stuff, but with this new design, I can pretty much do them wherever I want, like, there's very few limitations now. I think that is where I'm going to be leaving it for today, so I really hope you enjoyed. I think you can probably tell that I did. And if you did, make sure you do the subscribes and likes and comments, it really does help. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, I'll see you in the next one, and uh, bye!